gospel reading this morning comes from Luke's Gospel, chapter 23. It's found on page 89 in the New Testament. Let us listen for God's word. When they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals. One on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. And the people stood by, watching, but the leaders scoffed at him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself, if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God? since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds, but this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus replied, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please pray with me. Lord God, open my mouth that I may proclaim your praise. Silence in us any voice but your voice, so that in hearing we may be obedient to your word. Pray this in the name of Christ. Amen. The scripture reading this morning minces no words. For once, there is no biblical metaphor to interpret, there is no symbol to recognize. Instead, we only get stark words that describe a gruesome scene. The closest we get to such uncensored reality really just happened around here last Sunday afternoon. Like many people, I was glued to the TV as the storms came upon us, listening to the forecast, hearing about the wind speeds, and then came the tornadoes. First, we heard about the radar report, and then a sighting, and then a phone interview, and then the pictures came. Houses destroyed, factories demolished, car went through the middle of Starbucks. The first phone interview I heard was a typical Hoosier variety. The reporter asked the woman, what happened? And she said, ah, it was crazy. The wind started blowing and then the sirens went off and I yelled to my daughter, get the babies downstairs! And then I ran outside to see what was going on. <laughs> I'm not criticizing her because that's exactly what I would do. Because I've got to know what's going on. I don't want to read about it in the newspaper. I've got to see it for myself. That's why the scripture reading hits so close to home this morning, because it seems so real, so authentic. The opening verse reads like a first-hand account. It goes like this. When they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. It doesn't leave much for the imagination. Does it? it wasn't just a nondescript hill. It 
was a hill that looked like a skull. And they didn't just kill Jesus, they crucified him. And he wasn't the only one hanging on a cross that day. It was a multiple slaying. Two criminals were also hanging around. Now today is Christ the King Sunday. It's a great day. It's a fun day for many reasons. For one, as I mentioned, we get to sing some of the best hymns that the church has to offer. What's better than singing, All hail the power of Jesus' name? Except our recessional hymn, Crown Him with Many Crowns. That's a great one too. And then on the last day of the liturgical year, we gather around the Lord's table. What's better than that? But we're also thinking ahead to Thursday and Thanksgiving when we can celebrate with our families and friends all the wonderful blessings of our lives. But this year, we also get to celebrate with our Jewish brothers and sisters because of the star of Hanukkah. But maybe the best thing of all this year, maybe the thing that we can really celebrate today is that this year, great corporate America is opening the malls on Thanksgiving Day. Hallelujah for that! The pilgrims would be so proud. So it would be easy to skip the scripture today, that gruesome scripture. Because we have so many other things going on in our life. Who needs the downer of a crucifixion? Who needs the reality? Who needs a slap in the face about the meaning of Jesus? Well, it turns out, we do. Because even though it is Christ the King Sunday, today in Scripture, Jesus sure doesn't seem like a king. Does it? A common criminal, maybe. An unlucky Messiah, maybe. A misguided visionary, maybe. Today, we are like those criminals on the right and left of Jesus. We are called to wonder who is this Jesus with whom we are hanging around? Well, who is it? Probably the easiest way of answering that question is by saying who he is not. Jesus is not 90% of who we think he is. Jesus is not orthodox. He's not bound by tradition. He is not intimidated by the church. Jesus is not the one who is impressed by high steeples and flowing robes. Jesus isn't one, the one who cares about whether we paint the walls blue or green. Jesus is not interested in our religious idiosyncrasies. Despite what you may think, Jesus does not judge churches on their purity, their piety, or even their pumpkin pies. Although if Jesus cared about blueberry pies, we would be at the top of the list. Now, Jesus is not the Jesus that we often present to the world. Jesus is not the cowboy with the white hat who rides in the town and chases out the bad guys. Jesus is not the miracle worker who snaps his fingers and makes everything better. Jesus is not the general who leads the troops in the battle. We often want Jesus to be like that, but that's not who Jesus is. One of the criminals hanging around with Jesus mocked him, saying, Come on, Jesus, let's see what you can do. If you're really the Messiah, save yourself and lie around. Why don't you save us too? You see, Jesus is easily mocked when we turn him into a circus act. 
I think probably that is why some people are turned off by Jesus. We've turned his birth into a consumer madhouse. We've turned his face into a white Anglo-Saxon. We've manipulated his words to reject the lowly, to reject the oppressed, and to reward the high and the mighty. You wonder why so many millennials don't want anything to do with the church? It's probably because they understand fakery, they understand fantasy. They understand that if you are hanging around a circus act, you're eventually become, going to become bored and disappointed. But that's not who Jesus is. According to scripture, the second criminal hanging around Jesus was a little different. He didn't mock Jesus. He didn't beg for a miracle. He just said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Who is Jesus? Jesus is the one who remembers us. Last Wednesday, I was at a meeting with some people who were interested in fair trade food items, and a man who was speaking, he was telling about his experiences visiting coffee farmers in El Salvador, and he said there was an interesting difference between Salvadorans and Americans. He said in America, if friends don't see each other for a year or two, and they run across each other, they might say hi, and shake hands, and talk for a little bit, and then go on their way. He said in, in El Salvador, it's a little different. In El Salvador, if friends don't see each other for, say, even three hours, and then they run across each other, they'll run to each other and hug and give slobbery kisses and slobbery greetings. Obviously, there's not many Presbyterians. Genuine things of 
lives. Just knowing that you are remembered is enough to satisfy those needs. That second criminal hanging around with Jesus on the cross wanted only one thing. Jesus, he said, remember me. That's really our primary hope too, isn't it? Jesus, remember me. When I am sick and getting sicker, Jesus, remember me. When I am tired and lonely, Jesus, remember me. When I am apathetic and dispassionate about the world, Jesus, remember me. And when I am about to die, Jesus, remember me. Who is this Jesus of whom we are hanging around? Today we call him a king, but not a king who hides away in a castle. Jesus is the king of creation who knows his subjects intimately, who breaks down the norms, breaks through the obstacles, and even breaks through death to reach us. And when he reaches us, he grabs us and holds on tight. And then we know, yes, then we know that Jesus remembers us and always will. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.